Welcome to the Introduction to Financial Management. Two big topics to get us started. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about are the different forms of business organizations. There's sole proprietorships, partnerships, corporations, and then hybrid organizations like limited liability companies, limited liability partnerships. Each form of organization has advantages and disadvantages, and I'm expecting you to be able to read through those advantages and disadvantages on your own, and if you have any questions about any of those, to email me with further elaboration. Um, but one thing I did want to point out in this course, we're going to call it financial management. Sometimes the course is called corporate finance, and the reason for that is we're going to study, or a lot of the examples we'll use throughout this semester are related to the corporate form of business organization. And the reason for that is not that most businesses are corporation. In terms of numbers, most businesses are sole proprietorships. However, in terms of sales, most sales come from corporations. Roughly about, a, if you picked 100 businesses at random, 80 of those would be sole proprietorships. But if you measured $100 out of the economy, about 80 of those dollars come funnel through a corporate form of business. So that's why we're gonna focus on that form. I will say that all the different underlying concepts apply to all the different forms. Basically, you'd like to be able to estimate future cash flows and discount them back at the appropriate rate to know whether or not it's a good value-enhancing investment. But in any case, we'll focus on the corporate form. So we'll look at stocks, we'll look at bonds as a way of raising money to buy property, plate, and equipment to create new business opportunities. The other big topic of our introduction is this, what is the goal of a corporation? If we're going to focus on a corporation, what is its goal? We're going to say the goal is shareholder wealth maximization. All right, the Bible says something about profit. It says all hard work brings profit. Talk leads only to poverty. So, I mean, there's some grounding in that it's not a horrible idea to earn a profit. Uh, Milton Friedman is a famous free market economist, and he advocated there's one and only one responsibility of business, that is to increase its profits. That was sort of its sole reason for being is to operate a business was to produce a profit to serve society in that manner. John Wesley is the founder of Methodism. He did a sermon on sort of Luke 16.9, but his sort of punchline was that an indi this was geared toward an individual, but an individual should gain all you can, save all you can, then give all you can. Be productive, be thrifty, and then be generous. And that, I think, applies to a business as well. We want to produce as much as we can, be as efficient as we can, but then this is where it sort of breaks down at a business level, at least as it relates to Milton Friedman, uh, be as generous as you can. For an individual, that certainly applies, but how can, a generous be as, how can an individual be as generous as possible if the corporation, which you own a stock in, which you own a share of ownership in, if they send you a high dividend, you can share that as generously as possible. If the corporation doesn't produce a profit, doesn't pay a dividend, it's hard to be generous. I might own a company, but if they don't earn anything, send me any dividends, how am I supposed to share that wealth? Um, so we're going to measure sort of the shareholder wealth maximization. How do we know if that's going on? We're going to look at stock prices. That is the share of ownership of a corporation. Um, those trade on most Publicly traded companies trade on secondary markets, and we'll talk more about that in future lectures, but the market price of a stock is a measure of that value. In this course, we'll focus on increasing the fundamental or intrinsic value. Um, those should be the same things. However, markets are not perfectly efficient. We'll talk a little bit about that in a future lecture as well. Um, to some degree, sometimes prices are too high, sometimes they're too low, sometimes the market overreacts, sometimes the market underreacts. In any case, in the long run, the market price should reflect the intrinsic value of the company. However, over short run periods of time, those may not be the same. But we're going to focus on the intrinsic value, the underlying value. And by that, we mean sort of the fundamental price, the present value of all future profits. And the reason we want to, I want to mention that also is that well, you could say, well, couldn't we just increase our price by making a bad product, like making faulty product, and that would increase our profits in the short run, that might be true. However, to get repeat customers in the future, you wouldn't be able to sell a shoddy product or take advantage of people. And given that one of the advantages of the corporate form of is this unlimited life, a corporation could theoretically last forever. And so if you're going to be around forever, you need to do things that are going to be in your long-run interest. So maximize not just current profits, but also 
future profits, and the intrinsic value measures the present value of all future profits. Are profits the only business of business? That's not their only business, but we're going to say that that should be their primary focus. Producing a good or service that's of value to people in an efficient manner to produce a profit so that the owners, the claim holders, can be generous with that profit. Um, what's unethical, ethical behavior? Um, sometimes that can be contrasted with what's legal and what's illegal behavior, but for the most part, I would characterize this as anything that's in the long-run value of a organization is ethical. If it's going to increase shareholder value in the long run, that is ethical behavior. Um, the Bible, here Jesus, these are quotes from Jesus in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, actually Matthew, Luke, and John. Um, how are those relevant to business? Most of these quote passages, and I'll let you look them up for yourself, relate to the idea of treating your neighbor as yourself or doing unto others as you would have do unto you. And those weren't written for business. However, we've seen those, or I've seen those applied in a business context. For example, Discover Card. One of their taglines is, we treat you as how you treat you. That sounds very similar to the teaching of Jesus. So the general idea is, if you treat your customers well, if you treat other people well, that's in your long-term best interest. And so that's biblically based, but it's also related to shareholder wealth maximization. All right, those are the two big topics for our introduction. There are, uh, There is a quiz on this material to get you some idea as to what those quiz questions might look like. Here are some sample quiz questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just run through the answers just so you have them, but I would think through them, maybe jot these down on a separate sheet of paper, make sure that you're able to see what the correct answer would be and be able to track that down or figure it out for yourself. Um, but the answer to one is C, two is A, three is B, four is B, five is C, six is C, and there's more. Um, turning the page. 7 is C, 8 is A, 9 is A, 10 is B, and 11 is C. So again, this is just a general introduction. If you have any questions, be sure to email me. Other than that, I'm assuming you can read through the notes, um, look up additional information on the internet or wherever on the suggested reading to find out more information. However, I think the information provided in the notes should be sufficient to answer the sample quiz questions and then also answer the quiz questions as well. Good luck with your introduction to financial management.